My house was built in 1904. It's a single family home with a wood frame setting on a concrete block foundation. I've been living here for about 12 years, and of all the weird things that my siblings and me have seen and heard in this house, one event stands out. This happened to my brother. It was about 10 years ago. My brother and his best friends had started a garage band playing mostly Spanish rock. His friends could only get together on Sunday afternoons. They'd practice into the early evening and call it quits by 8 p.m. This was about the time I usually got home from work and went to bed, because I worked the graveyard shift. It was late fall, so the days were getting shorter, and they had just finished a long session and decided to head out to someone else's house. My brother handed his car keys to his buddy so they could load up the equipment. Everyone had left the basement and was waiting outside my brother's truck for him. My brother was walking up the back stairs when he remembered that he had left his pancakes in a to-go container that was sitting on a speaker in the basement. He made the decision to go back and get it. Now the basement's not clean with full sight lines there had been partitions made and the boiler and main heating unit are right smack in the middle. So after my brother walks back he's about to retrieve his food container when out of the corner of his eye he saw something. It was a shadowy figure, right in his peripheral vision. This feeling of dread and uneasiness washed over him. We'd been taught that if you're in the presence of a spirit or ghost and you felt a bad vibe, say a quick prayer, but my brother was so scared he just got the hell out of there. He started to walk to the back of the basement and briskly up the stairs, closing doors and turning off lights as he was walking out. The last light switches on the opposite side of the front door, and luckily the door was open and the night from the street lamp was flooding into the living room with its amber light. My brother said he had felt something at his back, but at no point did he turn around. As he flicked the last switch, the living room went dark, as did the rest of the house. As he stepped out, he pulled on the door, closing it behind him. Still holding his food container in one hand, he ran down the porch steps. He walked towards the front gate. Our house is far from the main street, essentially having a large front yard but no rear garage. As he closed the gap between himself and his friend-laden truck, he kind of smiled and thought things over in his head, mad at himself for freaking out when there was no reason. He climbed into the driver's side of the truck, putting on his seatbelt and getting ready to pull out of the parking lot when one of his friends asked, Hey, wait, what about your brother? Isn't he coming with us? My brother answered, What do you mean? He went to work early tonight. He's already gone. You see his car anywhere? He then asked, So then, who was walking behind you when you were leaving the house? One night when I was 10, I was woken up by my bedroom door opening, followed by someone sitting on my bed. I felt my leg grazed and the bed sink under a person's weight. Thinking it was my mom, I opened my eyes to see an eyeless boy. He had black, empty eye sockets. He was about my age and sitting at the foot of my bed. He extended his hand and in it was a little box. I was startled, but I reached out. He pulled back. I reached again and said, give it. Then I blinked and when I reopened my eyes, he was gone. But the imprint of someone sitting on my bed was present. Fast forward five years. My girlfriend came over to do homework. After she'd finished, she took a nap while she waited for her parents. When they arrived, I tried waking her up. She opened her eyes suddenly, looking up at a corner where the wall met the ceiling. 
She pointed there and went back to sleep. I shook her again. She came to full consciousness and I explained what she'd done. She said, up on the wall, I saw a little boy with no eyes. He was there in a Spider-Man pose, staring at me. I freaked down and told her my story about the same kid. Fast forward another five years. I was sitting with the same girlfriend and we had a two-year-old. We were living in my parents' house, in my old room. My daughter started waking up at the same time every night, and she'd talk. After a while, I noticed she had almost the same conversation every night. I playfully asked her who she was talking to. She said, It's a little boy. He's nice. He's lost and looking for his mommy. My daughter's nightly conversations continued until we got our own place later that year. It seems so cliché to start by saying I don't believe in ghosts, but that's where I'm coming from. A few years ago, I moved into a one-bedroom apartment in Melbourne, Australia. It was my first time living on my own. The apartment block had been built in the 1930s. I'd been there for a few months when I came home from work one day and went into the bathroom. I saw something strange. The wooden board covering a hole in the ceiling that led to a small attic space lay broken in two pieces on the ground. I examined the broken pieces. The board was an inch thick, and it would have taken Bruce Lee to break it. I thought the landlord had sent someone to work on the attic, but I was frozen stiff with fear. I thought, someone is up there for sure. I emailed pictures to the landlord asking if anyone had been there with an undertone of annoyance, since she hadn't warned me. Her reply read, Please call me as soon as you're able to. I called, and she explained that her last two tenants had said the same thing. She promised to replace the board, and she did. A month later, I woke up one night around 4 a.m. I had so many goosebumps, it felt like someone was rubbing their hands on me. Everything was silent. But then I heard this sound coming from above my bed. It was a dragging sound, like someone pulling a sack of potatoes. I was frozen, stiff with fear. I thought, someone is up there for sure. There's no way an animal could make that sound. After five minutes, I managed to work up the courage to turn on the light and walk to the bathroom. I was armed with a cricket bat. When I looked, I saw that the new board covering the hole was broken in two. I felt sick. The dragging sound had stopped, but I heard something else, whispering. The sound was clear and coming from the attic. It sounded like children's voices and I could hear one sentence repeated over and over. It's your turn. It's your turn. I freaked out and switched on every light in the apartment just to make myself feel somewhat normal. It was 5 a.m. and dark outside. I watched TV to try to unwind, but then a fuse blew. My pet bird, Dexter, whom I kept in the kitchen, usually never made a sound at night, but he started squawking like he was being strangled. I'd never heard him make those sorts of noises. He was screaming. I grabbed my car keys, ran out, sat in my car, and waited there until the sun came up. When I saw people walking their dogs, it comforted me enough to go back in. The front door was open, but I thought I hadn't closed it when I'd run out. I went to the kitchen to check on Dexter, and he wasn't in his cage. I felt sick again. All my windows were closed, so I looked everywhere inside. When I walked to the bathroom, I heard splashing. Dexter was half drowned in the toilet. I took him out, washed him and dried him, and I was so confused. At 8 a.m. I called the landlord and gave her a watered down version of the night. Oh wow, you heard the whispering too? She said. 
I stayed in the apartment for another 18 months, and I heard the whispering on a few occasions. And twice the board covering the hole in the ceiling moved. Although now I live elsewhere, the landlord recently called and said her new tenants had begged to speak with me about some of the stuff that's been going on there. 